Hi friends, welcome to GT Coding. This is the second video in our CSS animation series. In the first video, we had talked about transitions, and uh, in this video, we are going to talk about CSS animation property. Using transitions, you can create animations when you hover over your object, but using animation property, you can even start the animation at the time of page load and you can also loop the animation infinitely so let's get started so these are all the different options that you have in the animation property so first is the animation which specifies the name of our animation and the next is the animation duration which we had seen in the previous video and we also have animation timing function which are ease, ease in, ease out, ease in, out, linear and we also have step start and step end and cubic bezier we also have steps in our transition video i will explain how to use steps in this video and then we have animation delay then we have animation iteration count that is how many times the animation should continue and we also can define infinite if you want the animation to be running infinitely then we have the animation direction that is how we want the animation to work uh, if we want it to work in the reverse order we can specify reverse and then we have alternate which is once the animation runs in the normal direction the next time it will run in the reverse direction and then we also have alternate reverse and the next option is animation fill mode that is what should happen when the animation has stopped running so once the animation has stopped you can also let it stay at the current state or you can also revert it back to the original state I will explain this in this video and uh, then we have the animation play state we can use this to check whether our animation is running using javascript and you can also set the play state using javascript to running or paused so these are all the options that are in the animation property you can create complex animations using the animation property in css so here we have the syntax of our animation in a single line here we have the name duration timing function delay iteration count direction fill mode and play state you can write them in any order you want but the first value of time will be assigned to duration and the second value of time will be assigned to delay and all the other things you can write it in any order you want the actual animation is written in keyframes so you have to type in at keyframes and the name of your animation and in that you can specify what should happen at each of the keyframes so you can specify percentages for different keyframes for example zero percent is when the animation has just started and hundred percent is when the animation has ended you can define different properties for these percentages you can also define percentages of 23 24 or anything that you want you can write from for zero percent and to 400 percent which is also something that you'll learn in our demo so let's get started with our demo by the way this is this is also something that we are going to design later so let me just show you how this animation works so there we go so first of all we will just uh, look at a basic demo and look at all the options that we have and study them so here in the html i have created a division called box and in our style or css we will style the box so we will give it a width of 200 pixels and a height of 200 pixels then we will have a background color of red so now we are going to animate our box so here we will type in at keyframes and type the name of our animation that we want so we will just name our animation move right so this is our animation and in that we can define different keyframes that we want so first of all we will type zero percent what should happen at zero percent so here we will have margin left to zero pixels and at 100 percent we want the margin to be uh, 200 pixels 
So this is our basic animation where our box will move from 0 pixels to 200 pixels on the right. So here we will set the animation name. So we will type in animation and type move right and then we will set the duration of our animation so we'll type in animation duration and we will just type four seconds and then we want how long the animation should run so we will type in animation iteration count so we'll just type infinite for now so there we have our animation working and it is taking four seconds to complete and then we have other options so we have animation direction so we will uh, have it reverse so we can see the animation starts from the 100% and ends on 0% so we can also type in alternate so once the animation direction is normal the next time the animation direction will be in the reverse so now we have animation fill mode so this is useful only when we don't have our iteration count to be infinite so here we will change it to 2 so the animation will run only 2 times so here we will set to none first of all and we'll also set a delay so animation delay of two seconds so now if we refresh this we can see the animation starts after two seconds and we have it going and it stops over here we'll just make the count to three so now we can see the animation starts after two seconds and goes to the right it comes to the left and it goes to the right and then after it has stopped it directly jumps back to the initial state so if you want it to stay in the in the ending state we can type in four words so we'll just decrease the duration of our animation so now if we refresh our page we can see the animation starts and after the animation has ended it will stay in the ending state so this is what forward forwards does so we also have backwards so here we can see once the animation has ended it will end in the initial state so to see the difference between none and backwards we have to do some changes in our animation we will just make it 20 pixels so if you have none over here and if we check our animation we can see after two seconds the animation will start let me just increase the duration We'll just increase it to 100 pixels. Here we can see when the animation is starting, it directly jumps from 0 to 100 pixels. So if we want it to start directly from 100 pixels, we don't want it to stay at whatever margin we have defined in our box. We want to start it from 100 pixels right away so for that you can type in backwards so now if we refresh our page we can see it starts right from 100 pixels so that's the difference between backwards and none we don't want it to come back to the initial state after the after the animation has ended so for that we can use both so this will have the effect of forwards as well as backwards so when we refresh this page we can see the animation starts from 100 pixels and then it ends on the ending state that is everything about our animation fill mode 
and we also have seen about the animation delay then we have anima animation direction we also have animation direction as alternate reverse which means the animation animation will start from the reverse direction and it will uh, have the same effect as alternate so that's basically it now we will look about the animation play state so first of all we will change the animation iteration count to infinite so now we will uh, remove both the delay and our fill mode we don't need it anymore so here we will type in animation play state and we will have it paused we can see the animation has paused and when we type running we can see the animation starts again so that's basically it about uh, the animation play state we will also change our margin left to zero pixels over here now we're going to look at animation timing function so we will type animation timing function and you have already seen about ease ease in and all these things in our previous video you have also learned about cubic bezier so in this video we will learn about steps so write steps and in the parentheses you can type in a number and the animation will complete in the number of steps that you describe over here so this is an illustration of steps so here we can see that we have an animation of two seconds and uh, the animation is where the box moves from zero pixels to 100 pixels so here we have defined a step of four four steps means that the animation will complete in four frames so if we type four over here then we'll just change the iteration count to infinite we can see the animation runs in four steps so we don't have a smooth transition but we have four different steps and uh, this is how steps can be used in animation here we can see that we have written steps four and the next parameter is start so we can see the animation starts right at the start of the step which means the animation will start right at the beginning and if we type in end over there then the animation will start after the end of the first step i hope this is clear for you i will just remove this line over here now we can add more frames over here and customize our animation to what we need so we can type in margin top 100 pixels so this is how the animation will work if we change it to 80 percent the animation will change accordingly so this is a basic idea of how the animation property can be used you can also write this whole thing in one single line so i will just comment this and we will write everything in a single line so we have to type in animation so first of all we will type the name of our animation then the duration and the iteration count the direction so that's basically it so this is basically how animations are used in CSS so that's it for this video in the next video we are going to design the animation that i had shown in the beginning so this is what we are going to design in the next video using the animation property so if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest updates and also stay tuned for the next video thanks for watching have a nice day